OK, so um, let's just start with the uh, course briefing first. So usually the first class uh, course briefing is very important. So from there you should be able to learn and you should be able to know so uh, the entire so the course structure, how the lecturer and tutor were going to deliver to you all. So um, so um, and all the course assessments will be covered on the uh, on the on the on the particular lecture. So let's just go to the course briefing. And once we finish the course briefing, they will we will going to move on to the uh, to the uh, lecture one. So <coughs> so uh, my name is MP here. So uh, this I provided my email and then my office number. So you're welcome to find me if you have any uh, inquiry regarding this, this course or anything that regarding the assessments that you are not understand. So you can find me uh, anytime through the MS team or through the email. So my consultation hour is on the Thursday 3 to 5 and on the Friday uh, 9 to 11. Okay. So uh, let's say there's a clash with your timetable, uh, do feel free to let me know, okay? And your tutor is Dr. Morgana, so I think you guys are quite familiar with uh, her also. So she is the, uh, I believe she is your uh, ADIS uh, course lecture, am I right? So the email provider also, then the uh, of hours on 10 to 12, 10 to 11. So feel free to drop me a message or email if you have any inquiry regarding the uh, particular course here, software engineering principle. So okay, throughout the entire of this course, uh, we try to ensure that you you are you should be able to get to know uh, the entire of the uh, learning outcome here. The first, you need to know how to explain. Second, you need to know how to demonstrate and then apply and then comprehend. OK, so what you need to explain here is a uh, mean after finish this course, you should be able to explain the principles of the software engineering. OK, so and also you should be able to demonstrate the agile methodology for developing the software project. OK, so this is one of the methods of the software development and you should be able to apply the appropriate uh, pattern best technique. So here it should be covered into two. One is a architecture pattern and another is a design pattern for the software system design. Okay, and then lastly, you should be able to comprehend the technical issue to evolve and manage your software project. It means your project management and project maintenance. So throughout this course, in order to fulfill this uh, learning outcome, so we have five topics here. OK, so you notice here the first patch will be topic one until topic three and the second patch will be topic four and topic five. So each of the topics here, we're going to break it down into different lecture. OK, so you notice here topic one, you you have one lecture is a uh, introduction to software engineering. Topic one, you will have one lecture is a software diploma approach. Okay. Topic two is a job approach, so it will break it down into two lectures. It's a job practice of the development and a job management, which is a scrum and spring. So doing the same also for the topic three, architecture design, you break it down into three lectures, software architecture, design pattern, component based development. Okay. And topic four is a software testing and maintenance. So you break it down into four lectures, testing type and strategy, Test, uh, test case design, software re-engineering, software reuse. And the last topic is software management. So it break it down into four lecture here is a project management, configuration management, versioning control, and then the quality management. Okay, so all this is a, you need to know the uh, process of the software engineering. So in order to fulfill this software engineering, you need to know the principles of the software engineering, okay? So let's just go through the, uh, the overview of the uh, particular course first, and then uh, later on, I'll explain in further detail what I mean by the software engineer here, okay? So whether uh, what we learn here is whether it's uh, aligned to your thinking, current thinking on uh, about the software engineering or not. So whether your uh, understanding is the uh, same with my lecture or not. So, so we try to 
uh, we'll try to clarify here before we move on to each of the particular uh, lecture. OK, so uh, this is the textbook, so I'm going to use it. So the first one and then the second one. So both uh, lecture, uh, both textbook will be used to cover the, ele the 11 lecture for the entire so the courses here. So. So this is uh, your cost assessment is very important. So your assignment, you carry 15 marks out of the 40. Okay, your continuous assessment in total is just a 40, but your final examination is a 60. So assignment 15 only cover out the 40 only. So uh, I'm going to release it next week is week two. So this is your uh, group as, uh, assignment, but the component assess will be based on the group and individual as well. OK, so quiz here, uh, I'll conduct online quiz. It's a 10 marks out of 40, so it's only week 5. And midterm test is a 15 out of 40. Um, this one will be conducted on physical on week 8. So you need to have your midterm test uh, like what you do on the final exam also. So um, in this trimester, all the midterm tests for all the subject will be conducted in physical. So I believe um, today, is, uh, I believe uh, now 8 o'clock in the morning. This will be your first letter on where you join the other classes or the other courses. I believe your lecturer will inform you. So, meeting tests will be conducted in physical. So, your final examination is 16 out of 100. You will, you will conduct in the physical test also. Okay. So, so far, any question you would like to ask? Before I proceed, so far so good. Okay, so if you don't have any question, then I assume that you understand. So I move on. Okay, so um, teaching plan here. So all I cover on the uh, on the above here is uh, from your teaching plan. So uh, you can download the teaching plan from your web. Okay, so let me show you the teaching plan. So I'm going to uh, use this teaching plan. Okay. Okay. So hopefully you get you you can you can see my share screen on the uh, for the teaching plan. So this is a teaching plan. We're going to work out and design and do the planning for the entire so the trimester. So what I mentioned just now, the cost learning outcome. This is the one that we're going to cover. Okay. So uh, references is already provided here. And there's a, a, there's also provided additional references, so you might go through if you are interested. But if you have two uh, main textbook, should be more than enough for the entire so the trimester for this particular course. Okay, so um this is the assessment they will be covered. So let me move on to here it will be much more easier. So midterm test will cover fifteen, and quiz will cover uh, ten, and uh. Assignments will be 15. So all the here is a continuous assessment. In total, there's a 40 marks here. So for your final examination is 16 marks. OK, so this is all the planning uh, for each of the topic uh, requires a lecture. They will be carried out in each week here. So you notice here, this is the one that I mentioned to you just now. It will break it down into several lectures based on the uh, total of so the five topic. So, okay. so this is going to carry out. Okay, and um, um, you might away is a uh, um assignments we're going to release on the uh, week one, week two, but you're going to deal on the week twelve. Okay, so um, this is all your tutorial. So tutorial will start on week three. Okay, so tutorial will start on week three because we need to cover the lecture before we move on to the tutorial, and then quiz will be on week five. Okay, and then midterm will be on week eight. And then your assignment due will be on week 12. Okay. So um, you should download this uh, teaching plan and try to get understand well for your for this uh, course. Okay. So let's just move, move back to the uh, lecture slide. Okay. Um, before I move back to the lecture slide, um, I should share with you guys the web here. So um, explain with you guys how I work out with the with the web here, web content here. 
So you might aware the first uh, line here will be the announcement. Okay, also any announcement I will make through the uh, web. So lecture will start on week one and then your tutorial is on the physical this trimester. All the tutorial for all the subject will be tutorial with physical mode. And uh, my one for the software engineering principle short form we call it SEP will start on week three. So this is all our particular uh, information. So you should be able to find here also the consultation hour. And this is your class. If you join using the thing called here, and this is a teaching plan. So later on, once we finish the class, the recorded video I will share on the web uh, on the last row here. OK, so you should be able to uh, find one here is an uh, edit. One here is a uh, recorded video. So you don't need to be struggling to find out your recorded video from the MS thing. Just refer to your, your web. There's a link provided. You just click and then you should be able to get the uh, recorded video on each week that we carry out on in the lecture. OK, so. Um, so the uh, all this is your uh, material, cost material. They will be assessed by each week, but you notice it. The uh, web that I work out is like your to do list. It's like your calendar also. You notice here with two assignment release. So I remarked here already. So each of the uh, each of the requires each of the each week here. I will remark here week one, week two, week three. And then you notice here week five is a quiz. And then week eight is the return. OK, so assignment uh, uh, assignment question our I will release uh, by this Friday. OK, so I'll put it at week two also on week two columns. So um, for the assignment announcement for the uh, deadline and so on, so I will make it at here also. OK, so not worry so much. You just treat this uh, web as your calendar, as your to-do list. Then you should be able to figure out, uh, should be able to complete all the assessment and all the uh, instruction they provided for this particular course, eh? so not worry so much. So easier for you guys and convenient also. So there's a question from your friends, am I right? So, um, there are students are able to join the team. Um, okay. Um, hold on. Eh? Um, I think something wrong with the with the uh, on, with the uh. MS team, there's a it happened regularly. Okay. So okay. So uh, I share the link here, MS team link here for those students who cannot join. Um, then you ask your friends. I think what better I write here. So I want hold. Um. Uh, anyone know why MS thing there's so many issues here compared to the Google Meet and Zoom? Anyone know? <laughs> um, this is related to the software engineering also. Okay. Uh, it's because of the programming they are using. Okay. Um, usually Microsoft programming, they are quite uh, high computational power compared to the others uh, programming. So uh, let's say there's more student join. Let's say like the big classes like now, 200, sometimes 300, 400 class students in one classes, then you might notice uh, uh, MS thing they might consume a lot of the uh, issue. And, uh, and then your bandwidth also, it will lowering. So, so that's why I have in the class, I didn't come on my camera because we try to uh, save the bandwidth, cons uh, bandwidth and then try to save your uh, computational consumption also. Okay, so sharing amount so they uh, allow all the students should be able to assess the uh, internet connections with good bandwidth as well. Okay, so 
back software engineering principle maybe <laughs> okay um uh, um uh, not, not only i'll explain like the, what i mean by the software engineering principle um software engine principle that you explained here um is a different from uh the class also <laughs> okay the software engine principle are uh, not only later on we go we go through the lecture then you understand better okay it, but it's good to try okay so at least you know what you make mistake and then uh from the uh from the uh we call it so from the uh lecture uh sharing then you should be able to understand well uh the the particular course okay so let's just move on to the to the uh to the course briefing so teaching plan i already got you guys how you're going to use the teaching plan and then how you're going to use the webber so um be aware about this one <laughs> this is a very important so um my advisor is a uh, if you would like to score well for each of the particular subject, uh, you need to have planning uh, in the very beginning of the day. So you, you should have a target yourself. Um, Uh, sir, we cannot hear you. Sir, your microphone How is now? not How working. Now? How about now? Hello? Hello? Okay, it's working now. Oh, okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay, so, um, 
No, I repeat again. <laughs> okay, for your continuous assessment, eh? so it covering your quiz, midterm, and then your assignment. So all this you add out, you 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 sum up. Okay, how many marks here is represented as here? Is a total? Uh, is your sum up of your continue all the continuous assessment, including the quiz, midterm, and then the assignment. Then out of forty, you multiply by your hundred. Then you must get more than forty. OK, 40 out of 100 here must get more than 40 percent. So let's say like you not score more than just an example only. Let's say like uh, you get less than uh, 40. Then uh, I think we, we, we put as a positive thinking first. You, let's say you score more than 40, then uh, you pass for the one round for, for the first round. OK, less than 40, then will be viruses. OK, means fail. So for the FE final examinations, usually one Exam paper is a hundred marks, yeah? so you need to get more than forty. Okay, then you consider as a pass for second round. So you get then you get then get less than forty, then it's a viruses also. Okay, so so later on you need to have a total here. So your total is a total for the C plus F E. Yeah? You need to get more than fifty percent. So it, you only consider successfully pass the particular course. Not only this course, but it's uh, apply for all the courses. I believe you guys are quite familiar with this since uh, uh, trimester one. OK, so I just repeated uh, the explanation here again. So let's just move on again. OK, so I repeat again, week one, start on week one. Uh, let's just start on week one and then tutorial start on week three. But remember, tutorial is on the physical mod this trimester. So it's running throughout the entire of the trimester. But the lecture is on the RTL. OK, so attendance is very important. You need to fulfill 80% of your attendance. Uh, if let's say out of 100, if let's say you not fulfill more than 80%, then uh, students usually are not allowed to seek for the final examinations. Um, this one usually will be barred automatically by the systems, and then uh, exam department will not issue you the uh, requires uh, exam stick for the particular subject, means you are actually failed the courses. Okay, remember about this, it's very important for your attendance. Um, I would say, uh, just for your personal uh, sharing here, um, I would say attendance, uh, 80% is not everything. Okay, attendance 80% is not everything. But you joining the class, uh, you listening to the class, you ask the question, that is very important because you understand particular subject, then you only should be able to seek for your final examination. This is very important. This is the reason why you need to join the class. Okay, so uh, I believe quite numbers of students uh, might be joining the class and then just sign out only the, for the purpose. I think uh, it's a defeat for this course actually because you not understand well and in the exam usually students are not doing well because for my all the assessment usually I will test your understanding. So this is very important. Okay, so uh, I would like to arrange with you guys uh, for the midterm test. I'll conduct on week eight. So uh, could you please check your timetable? Do you have uh, any classes that is, uh, your schedule is uh, after six? You try to check now, let me know. Do you have any classes uh, is a conduct after six o'clock uh, in the evening? Anyone? Uh, I planned to arrange uh, your midterm test on Tuesday, but uh, I'm not sure whether I should be able to uh, reserve the venue or not, but no matter how our Put it on the six o'clock, okay? So six o'clock uh, in the evening on the week eight. So I will I will let you guys know which day, okay, for your midterm test. Uh, it conducted on the physical mode, and I believe all the lecturers are busy arrangement they arrange their venue now, okay? So anyone after six, let me know. <laughs> Friday got six to eight. OK, OK, Tuesday, Tuesday after six. I go, OK, OK. Um, so far I put as a Tuesday uh, at six. OK, so any changes thing I will let you know. Only Tuesday. 
I have to make sure I, I should be able to book the venue. So I try to arrange with you guys early. Okay, Monday I finish class at six. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So we consider this as a, we, we put as a Tuesday, uh, start at six, around six to 6.30. 6 to 6 30. So, because uh, we, I think we seek uh, all student feedback, some might finish at 6. So, uh, once you finish your, uh, your class at 6, you should be able to go to the venue. Uh, I think half an hour should be more than enough for you. Then, preparing for your uh, return test. So, I put around 6 to 6 30. So, I reserve the venue. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, let's just move on to the, to the, to the course briefing. Okay, so uh, this is that's all for the for the course briefing today. So any questions before I move on to the lecture one? So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. 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 For those students who cannot join your 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 team call, uh, try to remind your friends. Uh, just click on the link provided, and they should be able to uh access to the to the to the lecture now okay tuesday finish at six so um okay so it's it it that's kind of the issue then we try to arrange on the 6 30 we start at 6 30 okay start at 6 30 for the midterm tests okay <coughs> okay so let's just move on to the lecture now Try to understand what I mean by the software engineering and why you register this course. Okay, so this is very important. Um, I believe every courses that you register, uh, you need to know the reason why. Okay, and then uh, why it will be very useful for your future, especially when you finish your when you when you graduate uh, from your degree. So uh, software engineering. Let's just go, uh, go to the definition. You will understand better. OK, someone waiting at the lobby. Um, how about ask them to try again? Ask them to try again, yeah. Okay, hold on. There's quite a number of students requesting to join. Hold on, let me approve them to join now. Okay, uh, the other students suggest ask them to keep trying because this is an issue deal with the MS team. Okay, just keep trying. Um, hold on, let me invite. Okay. So anyone of your friends uh, cannot join, uh, just ask them to leave a message so at uh, least leave a message on the uh, meeting check then i know his or her name so i used the particular information to invite them in okay oh, no. so uh, okay this particular issue will, will consume a lot of the time here so sorry about that also anyone Okay, so
Um, sorry guys, girls here. Sorry, yeah. um, I need uh, to invite your friends in. Hold on. You, we might take a cup of coffee. Uh, we take a five minutes rest. Then uh, we come back at uh, 8 40. Okay. Let me invite your friends in. Okay, uh, I noticed that some students are already in the uh, in the list, uh, means they already joined the class in advance, but uh, cannot join the lecture. So, my ask your friends to restart your computer or restart the MS thing and then try again, see how. Okay. okay.
Okay, so let's just start with the lecture now. Okay, this is a, it's a delay already. So um, lecture one is a uh, try to introduce the mechanics overview of the software engineering. Okay, um, the topic one, it will break it down into three subtopic here. It's a software engineering and then software process model and then copying with the changes. Okay, so first you need to know what I mean by the software engineering. So I'll try to make this explanation as easy as possible because a lot of the technical terms are on the lecture. So what you need to do is uh, I already provided here the red highlighted color. So you just focus on the red highlighted color. Then you might you should be able to understand well for each of the explanations here. There's a, there's quite plenty of the uh, the test provided here, explanation provided here. So you should be able to highlight on your PowerPoint slide yourself also and use this as your revision. OK, so I already provided all the notes provided uh, on the highlighted. It's a very important keyword. And then I remind you again, you try to highlight on your PowerPoint slide. OK, and then you should be able to also focus on the keyword for the explanation. So software engineering is an engineering principle, a discipline. OK, so what I mean by engineering discipline here? So you, you notice you focus on this role. You notice you focus on this one. Engineering discipline is a you need to use the appropriate theory method to solve the problem. So this problem is a organizations or financial constraints problem. So means uh, however that you use it for your software engineering principle, you need to use the particular theory and methods of the software engineering principle to solve the organization or financial constraint. OK, you need to use both, not only one to solve the financial constraint only, but you need to use to solve two constraints at the same time. It's the organizations and financial constraint. OK, remember about this. So what you need to do is uh, you need to use a theory and method. OK, theory and method here will be utilized as we call as the principles of the software engineering. OK, and this uh, theory and method here uh, when you apply it to solve the problem, and this will be concerned throughout the entire of the software production. So software production here, you notice highlighted here is uh, covering the process of the development and process of the project management. OK, so very important. So um, this project uh, process development and process uh, project management, you need to uh, it's usually is running through from the earliest of the stacks of the software specifications to the systems maintenance. So system specification here, it refer to your system planning and analysis. System planning analysis. So when we we are, when we explain based on the keyword, you might you might aware is a is a quite complicated quite complicated. So I try to summarize here is a software engineering you need to apply the engineering discipline here we refer to the theory and methods okay theory and methods to manage or deploy the project okay from the early stack of the system specifications it refer to your system planning and system analysis towards the end if you is your system maintenance okay so i repeat again Software engineering is a, you need to apply theory and method to solve the problem, okay? Throughout the entire of the software production, okay? From the early stack of the system analysis, system planning analysis towards the ends of your software maintenance. This is called as a software engineering. So in these classes, you're going to study a lot of the theory and methods, how you're going to solve the problem. How are we going to solve the problems? So uh, I'll say this class, uh, we usually have a lot of the case study you need to deal with. So based on this case study, how are we going to solve the problems? How are we going to provide the solution? That's very important. So this is a challenge of this class. Okay. So if whatever that you study here, you need to know, you need to understand well, only you should be able to propose the appropriate solutions to solve a particular problems. So 
This is very important. OK, so. So the importance of the software engineering is uh, to cover two principles here. First, you need to provide the reliable systems quickly. OK. <laughs> software development developer is not like traditional uh, software development method. Nowadays, you need to produce your software as or we call it as you need to deliver your software as fast as you can. OK, this is a uh, what is a uh, widely used in the software house nowadays and also demanded from your stakeholder. Stakeholder, I refer to your customer. OK, and second one is that uh, you need to produce a cheaper Cheaper here doesn't mean it's very cheap here. It's because a uh, software deployment usually is quite expensive, but it try to lowering your budget. Okay, try to lowering your budget. So we call this as a bit cheaper. Okay, and your software should be able to have a long run. Okay, means can sustain longer. Okay, so uh, this is we refer to the software engineer. So importance of the software engineering is uh, you need to produce the reliable system quickly, or we call it as a deliver the system quickly, and then you should be able to produce the cheaper and long run software system. OK, so this is importance of the software engineering. So uh, but how are we going to use this? Uh, requires uh, use the method and theory of the software engineering to solve the particular problems to fulfill the fast deliver software and then cheaper long run software systems. How are we going to fulfill these two? We're going to study throughout the entire of this trimester. OK, so remember about this. You might have a lot of the case study and this case study is the problem usually the encounter by your stakeholder. But how are you going to pro pro uh, provide the solutions to solve or deal with the particular problems on the case study? So this is very important. So I would say this lecture is not easy. <laughs> this is a second trimester, uh, second trimesters, first trimester, second year, uh, second year subject. So it close to the third year subject already. So it's a big challenge compared to your first year, first uh, first trimester subject. Okay? So the one that I mentioned just now, the software process, okay, it cover is a software specifications, software development, software validations, and software evolution. This actually you study in the ADIS, okay, and also study in the OSAD before, okay, for those students who have taken the OSAD, okay. Um, but uh, in this lecture, we try to group your whatever that you study into four classes only. We'll be going to group and then we'll categorize into the four facets only. Okay, so let's just go through each of the facets here. Then you understand better that actually you have studied this before. Okay, software specification is a customer engineering define the software that is to be produced and the constraints of its operation. Usually, it's referred to your system planning and analysis. So it means. Uh, Software specification, it covers two phases. Is a, it consumes two phases. Is a system planning and system analysis. So you try to knock down this. Uh, okay. So system development here. So you notice the definition. Software is design and program. So it means it covers two phases here also. Software design and software development. Okay. So all this uh, uh, provided on this uh, lecture slide, the software process is from your from your test button. So software validation here, you notice here, software is checked to ensure that it is what the customer requires. So you need to conduct the software testing. So software validation is referred to software testing. Software evolutions, so you notice here, software is modified to reflect changing customer and market requirement. So means it's a Software maintenance, software maintenance. Uh, for the first few lectures, you might be a bit uh, difficult to pick out because you need to get familiar with the technical term. We call this all is a technical term. So once you get master with the technical term, on the following lecture, you might be able to pick up very fast. Okay, you might be able to pick up very fast. So I repeat again, 
software specification here, it covers two phases, software planning and software analysis. Okay, so in future, in the lecture notes, if I mention software specifications, so in that in immediately you know, actually this is referred to software planning and software analysis. Okay, it's like the one that I mentioned here just now, you notice it. From the early stacks of the system specification, so it means the system planning and system analysis. Software development, it covers two facets here, is a software design and software development. So a lot of students get confused. They, they thought this only covers software development. No, for these courses, it covers two, software design and software development. Uh, let's say I go too, too fast, try to uh, slow me down. Eh? Okay, let me know. Try to slow me down. Okay, software validation here is referred to your software testing. Refer to your software testing. Software evolutions refer to software maintenance. Okay, so you can think about this. Actually, you have studied before in the ADIS classes in OOSID classes, am I right? Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's just move on. Okay, so software engineering principle, as I mentioned just now, MS team usually it will have a lot of issue regularly. Okay, so how good the software it is? Usually, we cannot judge based on our personal assumption. We cannot judge based on our personal opinion. And you cannot judge based on your personal feeling. But there's the attribute that provided to judge whether this is a good software or not. Okay, it covers four factors here. The first one is a maintainability. Second one is a dependability and security. So a lot of students, sometimes the callous is a Dependability and security actually they are combined together. One, you cannot split them into two words. Okay, remember about this. Eh? You cannot split this as a dependability or split this as a security. Actually, these two they combine together because by the end these features will make them as a reliability. Okay, eh? so third one is a efficiency. Efficiency. And then the last one is the uh, acceptability. All these certain features of the attribute, uh, certain attribute here can be measurable. Can be measurable here is referred to when you do the project, you have your project objective. Okay, you have your project objective. So in the end, you need to fulfill your project objective. But how are you going to know that your project objective is already fulfilled? I believe this. Uh, those students who have taken IPS, PW, Project 1 and Project 2, you can understand this better. So how are you going to measure that you already fulfilled this project objective? It's because you measure your system performance. You measure your system performance. So you have graph, you measure whether this output is increased drastically or not, or it is a decline. So it decline usually is a reject, means it's a, it's a performance is a lower than you expected. If it, if it increase means this performance is much more better than you are expected, am I right? So it must be have a measurable, must be measurable. So maintainability here is referred to evolve to meet the changing need of the customer. If you design a software, your software can be just a one time deployment, but it cannot further maintain anymore. This software is not considered as a good software. Okay, usually those good software is can be evolved. It can be added the features to make it more advanced, to make it more better in future. You're not going to resign this software again, and again, again in future. Okay, so usually those redesign, redeploy, usually it will waste a lot of time. So once you counted this time, usually it's a cost, it's your money. Okay, so we try to minimize our budget. Is a we allow the software to be evolved to be maintained in future. So like what you download the software from the Google store, uh, app store, okay, those software will keep remind you update the software regularly and all right. 
So each time you do the out typing, usually they do the maintenance, they do the evolve, they, they evolve the software. So if they try to do the upgrading to be better, to make the customer demand. So whatever they you comment on the Google Store, Play Store, Play Store, sometimes the developer or the organization itself, they'll try to consider your requirement. Okay, so dependability and security here, you focus on the highlighted keyword. You notice these two words when they combine together, if you fulfill dependability and security, you fulfill the system's reliability. You fulfill the system's reliability. If you fulfill security, then you might fulfill the security and safety only. Remember about this. Huh? So this is lots of the mistake they made by the students. They try to split these two keywords into each into each. So like they put dependability or they put security. As you know, we try to combine them together because we would like to get the reliability. OK, efficiency here, it can be measurable in your project to fulfill the objective. Through the responsiveness is a system sensitivity. You can measure am I right? Processing time, you can measure. Memory utilizations, processing, processor utilization, all this you can measure. So uh, this is required as uh, efficiency. So in future, when they ask you how you're going to measure efficiency, okay, you say I have a high responsiveness, I have a high processing time, I have a low memory utilization and low processor utilization. All this can be measured. Acceptability, how are you going to know your user is going to accept your project or not, accept your system or not? You must make sure your customer understand your system understand your system and your system should be able to use we consider as a useful and your systems should be compatible with other systems as well this is we call only as a acceptability so remember about this uh, this is what i would like to remind you in early when you try to do the questions don't make any assumptions okay so like this is what usually it is a mistake from your senior they like to make assumptions. Okay, I'm assuming that this question actually asks like this. No, usually you need to understand the question properly and then deal with what you have studied. Apply your knowledge to solve the problems on the case study. Don't make any assumptions. If let's say the question asks you A, then you just provide the solutions for the problem A. Okay, so this is four attribute that you use it to measure whether your software is good enough or not. Okay. Now you already understand what I mean by the software process. Okay. So let's say let, let's just uh, use this uh, as an example for measuring the MS thing. So uh, your friend just now mentioned also it's a no good software engineering principle. So we try to measure this uh, whether the MS thing is good enough or not as an example for you guys. MS thing maintainment ability or not? Yes, uh, it keeps upgrading quite frequent. Dependability and security reliable? Not that reliable, okay? Not that reliable. Secure? Yes, secure so far. Efficiency? Um, sensitivity? Sometimes they might have an issue. Processing time usually quite slow. Um, when you're running the, uh, the MS thing, you're running other program at the same time, you might notice your computer are lowering, the processing are lowering. And memory utilization is usually is a very high memory utilization. So you notice you open MS thing, the consumption use for the memory is much more higher than other program. Uh, processor utilization it definitely because it caused by the memory as well. And acceptability, I didn't guide you to use MS thing at the first time. Do you know how to use it? This is because as understand ability. And uh, whether it's useful or not, so far it's useful. <laughs> Even there's a lot of issue, but it's useful. And compatible or not, um, sometimes not that compatible. So from there, you can conclude whether this software is a useful, good software or not. Okay, this is how you're going to judge the particular software. Okay, so uh, session 1.2, software process model. So uh, we're going to use all the software, uh, the process model that we mentioned here. We're going to cover all the software process activity. Means uh, 
all the software process activity, activity usually will be included in each of the software process model. Okay, so, so you notice here, uh, when you having this class, there's a lot of the technical turn. At the first round, you might be very difficult to pick up. But after the lecture, I hope you guys try to understand the technical turn here, like what you mean by software process activity, what you mean by software process model, uh, the definition itself. Then in future, you might be able to understand the explanation better and also be quite helpful for you guys to understand the question asked in the examination, in the exam or in the assessment. OK, so software process model. Usually it cover all the software process activity. And when you break down each of the process activity, let's say like what you mean by here is uh, you have software specification. So your software specifications, it covers system analysis, software planning and software analysis. Okay. Then you break down all the activity that you include for the software planning and you break down all the activity in for the software analysis and also do the rest until the software evolutions. You will notice that each of activity are getting much more complex. Complex. So this is try to use it, okay? Try to use it as a guideline to monitor your, to monitor what? Monitor your project schedule and project budget. So your project schedule is referred to produce the liable system quickly. If referred to your project budget means you're going to produce a cheaper long run software system. So, okay. If you fulfill these two, means you fulfill the software engineering principle and also the quality as well. Okay, so that's why quality mentioned here. So, software engineering principle, you need to fulfill three project schedule, project budget, and software quality. Okay, so a lot of students that might misunderstand it because they thought they already actually fulfilled the software engineering because they deliver the project fast. They fulfill the budget, but they don't make the software quality. But actually, if you don't make the software quality, means you are actually not fulfilling the software engineering principle. So this is challenge of the software engineering principle. You need to fulfill three. So means you need to deliver your soft quick quality of software in the project schedule, within the project schedule, within the budget as well. That is the challenge. OK, so let's say like I ask you to, to deploy the project. I'm your stakeholder. Then I would like you to deliver, deliver the project within three months. Then you say, yes, you should be able to deliver within three months. But these three months, you need to fulfill, you, to, you need to complete your budget within these three months, uh, project within these three months. And also you need to fulfill the budget that I given to you within these three months. Let's say I give you only 1,000. So ask yourself whether 1,000 is sufficient for you within these three, three months. If that's not sufficient, only you realize in the end of the project that actually you are not fulfilling the software engineering principle. Okay, so there's a few software process models here that we cover only three here. The first one is a waterfall model. So this is very traditional, very old software process model. I believe you study this in the ADRS, in the OOSID classes, am I right? So, um, next, next one is the incremental development model. So this is uh, our lecture for this course will be emphasized more on the incremental development and then the integrations and configuration. OK, so integration and configuration is another process model. So what is different between these three here is a waterfall model usually is a very old or we call it a traditional model that you need to fulfill each of the phases. OK. OK, you need to fulfill each of the phases means one phases you need to complete before you move on to the next phases. And then usually you need to have intensive documentation. You need to have intensive planning and intensive upfront analysis. Means before you do the project, you need to have a very good planning. You need to have very intensive analysis before you start your project. So usually it consumes a lot of time, a lot, a lot of time. And this kind of project usually only suitable for the large project. OK, so duration could be three years and above, three years, five years, seven years and above. 
Okay, so incremental development <coughs> is suitable for small scale or medium scale project. And this project usually is deployed incrementally. It means uh, incrementally here, it means each of the facets you're going to come up with the several versions. And this several version, you are keep enhanced, keep improving based on the customer command. And here the customer satisfy it. Okay, only you move to the next facets. So on each of the facets here, you might aware you will consume a lot of these different kind of the versions. And this version usually is try to enhance the customer requirement. And usually this kind of method, you should be able to deliver system faster. You should be able to deliver system faster. And it only suitable for small scale, medium scale project. And it should be able to adapt to the customer frequently change. Okay, so this is a widely used model in the market nowadays. We call it incremental development. We're going to go through this in detail later. So integrations and configuration model is also uh, quite well known nowadays. You're going to use the component and then you try to use a method by plug and play. You try to con in, you try to configure it, and then you try to integrate it into the systems. Component here can be referred to. I believe you guys uh, quite use it uh, frequently, but you um, might be you only not aware about this. Like what you call as a packet, what you call as an API. All this is a component. In this lecture, we call component is your API is your packet. So you write your programming, you like your Java, you need to call the packet. Okay, you 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 write the Flutter, you write the Android programming, you're going to call a packet. Okay, you you need to use the Google API, like Google Mac API, integrate into your systems. You need to do the upfront configurations, try to understand the coding before you integrate it into the system. Am I right? All this is process about the integration and configuration. This is also one of the model. Okay. So we call in another word, we call it as a reuse oriented software engineering okay, model. So uh, we're going to cover this in each of the lectures, so not worry so much. Uh, at the first place, you try to for, you try to put planning and um, you notice here plan driven and agile uh, deployment approach. You put it aside because uh, I'm not going to cover in the lecture one. I'm not going to explain in the lecture one because if I explain more, you might get confusing you know, also because there's so many technical terms provided here. So you try to get master with the technical term here before I move on to the plan driven and agile diploma approach. This one will cover in the lecture too. So not worry so much. OK, so uh, this is waterfall model. So waterfall model, so you notice uh, the first one requirement definition. This is a planning analysis. So we call this as a system specification. So software and system and software design okay then you don't you're going to implement and uh, conduct the unit testing so software design and software implementation we call it as a software deployment am i right this is under the software deployment as we study there's a four facets just now so unit testing and then integrations and system testing this is under the system validation and then last one, operation and maintenance. This is under the system evolution. So you notice each of the model, it will cover all the software process activity. Okay, so the winners of this software model here, there's overlapping here. You notice it. There's two testing here. Conduct testing twice here. So it will consume a lot of time. Unit testing and system testing. Okay, so not worry about so much about unit testing and software testing. We're going to cover in the uh in the in the lecture act or lecture nine okay and i believe also you guys have studied unit testing in the OOSID class eh? okay so no worry so much we just try to understand what i mean by waterfall model here so waterfall model there's a challenge let's say you not do the planning for the you not finish do the planning for the uh, software you not do the upfront intensive analysis you cannot move on to the software design Okay, let's say you, you have you have yet done the software deployment, you cannot move on to the software deployment. Design, you, uh, you have yet done the software testing, you cannot move on to the software deployment. So, so this is a witness of the waterfall model. Okay, so um, the expansion that I mentioned just now is already highlighted on the on the red color here. It's difficult to accommodate the changes because 
a facet have to be complete before moving on to the next facet. Okay, so this one usually cause inflexible partitioning. Okay, so means uh, inflexible partitioning means let's say like here is uh, under system planning, here is under system design. You cannot. This is a partition. Okay, this is a partition. Entirely, they also call this as a facet also. So the most suitable kind of the project that uh, that that you can apply for the waterfall model is uh, unless you are understand the requirement very well, unless you understand the requirement of your project very well, and then changes of your software is very limited. Changes of software is very limited. So means that uh, however that you do the changes, only you propose during the software specification. Once the software has start, doesn't mean you cannot do the changes, but you need you have to do very, very little changes only. Because once you do any changes, you need to move back to the existing phases, previous phases to start off again. So this one will waste up a lot, a lot, a lot of time. So that's why they need uh, intensive upfront, the intensive planning. Make sure this planning is a plan well. Analysis understand well, then only they start to move on. This is how they try to expect that once they move on, they will not have any changes anymore. So once they have any changes, it will delay your project. So this kind of project usually suitable for large system, large systems. Duration is up to the three years and above, three years, five years, seven years and above. Okay. And you need a, you need a, uh, intensive documentation. So any every stages happen in the waterfall model, you need to do documentation. So it usually wastes you a lot of time. Also, you need to spend a lot of time in the documentation. Okay. So compare the incremental deployment model, you do less documentation, but you do you spending more time on the deployment. So how they work out is a uh, they do less documentations. Okay. They work out is uh, they do the initial planning, means they do the at very beginning planning only. Then they try to work out on the particular facets first. For example, I give you this is diagram of the incremental deployment. So you do the planning, okay, you do the initial uh, initial implementation means initial planning. Hold on, let me pick out, let me answer the call. Okay, so what you need, what you need to do is uh, you just need to have an initial planning only. So initial planning, usually your project is break it down into from the objective, you break it down into a series of tasks, and this series of tasks you're going to have an initial planning, and you're going to plan for the specification, deployment, and validation. So throughout this specification, deployment, and validations, you you work out with the several version of the software. So, for example, in the specification phases, you work out with several versions of the software, and this several version of the software you need to get approved. You need to get command from your customer. So, once this specification is fine, then you only move on to the deployment, and then work out with another versions again. Then customer command work out with another version again. Keep command until it finalized. Then only you move on to the system validation. So you might notice here. The each of the facets here, they are they are actually interleaved. So means interleaved here. Interleaved here means each of the facets here they might have their own different versions of the software. Okay, yeah? so so this is a part of the agile deployment approach, but not really so much about this one. We're going to uh, explain this further uh, on the next lecture or lecture two. Um, incremental deployment model usually it allows to give you the fast feedback, rapid feedback from the customer because customer always together with you, okay, from the planning until towards the end of the software deployment. Customer always along with you, okay. So, could be at the early stage, your deployment could be very slow. 
because uh, you might get a lot of the customer comment. But uh, when you move on to the uh, to the others uh, activity, you might get familiar with your customer's requirement. So once you get familiar with your customer requirement, then the issue that you consume will be lesser compared to the early stage. Okay, so means at the very beginning, you might get a lot of comment, but your progress might be a bit slow. But when you move on to the next phases or the following phases, then once you get familiar with the customer requirement, then your project will keep moving faster. So this is a benefit of the incremental deployment because you need to get familiar with the customer requirement. You need to get familiar with the customer requirement. For the waterfall model, only one time when you gather the requirements from the customer, then you come back, have a discussion with your group member, draft out everything, do the planning, do the intensive analysis, then you move on to deployment. Customer will not together with you. But incremental deployment, each of the phases, customer will always involve. It will always along with you until the project complete. He has the right to give you the comment. Okay, so this kind of model usually because the customer will always give you a comment and this kind of model usually adapt to the frequently change. Okay, and then should be able to deliver your software faster and then always will deliver the requirement that close to the real requirement. Okay, so uh, remember no matter how project you, what kind of project you do, by the end you will not be able to deliver 100% perfect they are relate to your 100% uh, of your customer requirement. We usually only close to the real requirements only. Okay, the reason is because, like, like for example, like I pass the announcements to you, then your friends are not attend the class. You pass this announcement to your friends, and your friends pass the announcement to the another friends. I believe in the end, the re the announcement that the last one who pass to the to the the last seconds pass to the last one might not as similar as the one that announced. Am I right? So this has happened to you also when you apply the incremental deployment model. When you meet with a customer, your customer propose you the requirement. You come back, you do the documentations, and then this documentation you try to verify with your customer again and then you start doing the activity again. This is all based on your understanding, how your understanding is to deal with your customer solutions. Because you are technical persons, your customer are not the technical person. He or she are not the IT guys. And you need to provide the solutions that are related to the IT solutions to your customer. So understanding measure are in the same channel. If the understanding are in the different channel, they might have a conflict, okay? So not really so much about this. I give you a, uh, some uh, guideline first. So at least you understand the model. Then when we, we move on, then you understand that better. So incremental deployment model, the benefit is the cost of the changing will be reduced because we get familiar with your customer's requirement. And then amount of the analysis and documentation could be, uh, that need to be done could be less, okay? Because customer always along with you, give a comment. And then by the time when you move on, uh, you will get familiar with the customer's requirement and you are easy, definitely are easy to get customer feedback all the while. And then you should be able to deliver your product as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. So, but problem is uh, no matter how good the model is, definitely there's their weakness also. So the weakness is the process is uh, not visible. <laughs> what I mean by not visible here, because you do less documentations, you only do in initiate uh, planning only. So a lot of the detailed documentations, detail uh, are not documented. So project manager should be able to monitor your progress every day. If he or she not monitor your progress every day, he might not be able to pick up progress because your process is not transparent to everyone. Okay, because your process are not documented, are not transparent to everyone. So that's why project manager had to pick up the progress every day, had to monitor your progress every day. So this is a challenge of the project manager. Okay, so 
Incremental deployment models are very difficult to accommodate to the large, complex and long lifetime system. Remember about this. It's only suitable for small and medium scale project. OK, so reuse oriented software engineering. So this is a you need to apply the component, as I mentioned just now, the package or we call it as a API and then integrate into your systems. And this component we call another word as a commercial of the shelves, commercial of the shelf systems. We call it as a COTS. OK, so if in future you when you work with the industry, some of them they call it as component, some they call it as a COTS, some they call it as a commercial of the shelf systems. They're actually the same. OK, so we use element here. You need to configure and then try to adapt those uh, system behavior or system functions to meet your customer requirement. Then only you try to integrate that into your systems. So system behavior here is referred to your data structure. System function here is referred to your data structure. All this is a programming. OK, you need to know how to configure. You need to know how to derive. You need to know how to inherit and then you need to know how to crack the classes. All these components have to deal with all these particular elements. OK, so I noticed there's a question from your class, Matt. The constraint of the software specification refer to the uh, cost of the deployment. Mm, cost of the deployment is referring to the software process model. So software specification only one of the facets of the software process model. Diamond you mean hopefully you understand. Uh, I repeat again. Software specifications only one of the facets of your software process model. Okay, usually the cost effective can be measured throughout the software process model only. Okay, let's say you use, let's say case study asks you to deal with certain issue, certain problems, but this problems are not are not suitable apply for waterfall model but you're suggesting waterfall model actually this is not cost effective usually we measure based on the process model that you are using so uh, does it mean that the cross platform is for acceptability um, cross platform it could be one of them because you need to measure the compatibility you need to measure the compatibility so compatibility is part of the acceptability for example, not only cross platform, sometimes it will deal with your hardware as well. For example, you develop your mobile programming. So you do the Android uh, apps, you, you develop the Android apps. Then your Android apps are not compatible with certain of the Bluetooth, are not compatible with certain of the GPS. This is deal with the compatibility as well. So it deal with your technology. It also deal with your cross platform. So, so Make sure this fulfilled, then only acceptability can be fulfilled. Okay, so can someone invite me on? Okay, Paul, let me invite Chua Sang in. Um, not worry so much, guys. Uh, for the first lecture, could be a bit challenge because you, you guys need to understand a lot of the technical terms here. But slowly you get familiar, then you will get master this course. Um, can you give examples of the constraint? Constraint means difficulty, constraint means limitation. So for example, like certain of the organization, they have their own limitation. For example, like uh, there's a, there could be a lot of the kinds of the, could be different kinds of the possibility on the problem itself. I give one of the example could be like, they would like to deliver the, uh, they would like to develop the project and this project should be able to deal with certain kind of issue like they need to have a real time processing. OK. Then make sure that all the users they connect to the server, then this server when they access to the uh, systems will not slowing down. OK, like a lot of the limitation that comment on the App Store, Google Store, comment by the user are not happy with the particular software. All this is a constraint. All this is limitations. Why this limitation will deal with your organizations, will deal with your financial constraint? It because let's say you are the Facebook company, okay? Then the Facebook itself have a lot of issue. Then you are not happy with the Facebook. Slowly, your user will get less. Am I right? Automatically, it will affect the organization financial issue. Am I right? Second one, if the software are not useful, then 
or how the organizations will able to generate the revenue. This is automatically they will impact their organizations. So nowadays, the software are very powerful. One of the organization, whether it's success or not, it usually highly depends on the software they are using. For example, like Microsoft, they are using the certain software to monitor their customer issue, to monitor their um, analyze their statistic on the data size. All this is dealing with the we call as a business information systems. All they deal with the business information system. Make sure they're using these systems should be able to help them to generate the revenue. If not, then a lot of the constraint, a lot of the limitations, a lot of the problems they will come up. Okay, then will affect their financial, will affect their organization operations. Then we try to solve this software issue for them. Once this software issue solved for them, their soft, their staff productivity will increase. Then definitely their business revenue will getting better. So hopefully you guys understand. So um, this one we call usually we call as a, we try to group all these kind of system we call as a business information system. So I give you an example what I mean by business information system. So um, okay, business information systems. Put as a capital letter, business information. If you practice three keyword spreadly, you try to understand it, then you'll get much more family. You use the systems, okay? You use the systems, or this kind of systems usually is to deal with the business information. Is to deal with the business information. So for ever the information that you generate from the organization itself is always dealing with the business and all right and this systems is used to manage it used to monitor it used to analyze it used to forecast the business information in short form we call this as a business information systems okay so in your assignments you're going to you you you're going to uh propose a business information systems and then you're going to work out the entire so assignments for this particular topic as well. Okay, so uh, not only so much, I would say, first you need to understand the technical term first, and then so each of the lecture, it will inherit from the existing lecture, and then definitely it will keep repeating using the technical term. So uh, try to get master of the technical term first, and then so each of the theory, how you're going to apply, how you're going to work out on this, we're going to implement it in your assignments. So you're going to apply in your assignments. You're going to get family, all the technical terms, all the model, how you're going to apply it in the assignment. So once you finish your assignments, then you should be able to get family, family with the entire of this software engineering principle. So no worry so much about your engine uh, assignments. I will guide you each sessions throughout the entire of the trimester. So you might use this habit as a uh, habit try to complete your assignments because assignments usually is uh, from your lecture note. You need to get familiar on it. Then this is also get preparing yourself for your final examinations. Okay, Get familiar with, with the format, get familiar with all the knowledge and try to understand it and apply it into your final examination. Okay, Remember about this. Uh, so assignment is very important. So I'm going to release it by next week. Okay. So uh, let you know in advance, um, assignment is a group assignment, but uh, inside there, there's a, I'm going to divide into two assessments. One is your group assessment, one is your individual assessment. <coughs> so you can find your group member in advance. So maximum members only four, see? Maximum only four members in one group. You can find cross to the other program as well. For example, like, CS student can join with CN, IA or IB. It's not limit, not necessarily you need to join only within the CS group, but you can join with other students, okay, from other program. So this one you can find, try to find, try to try your best to find your group member by this week. And then once I uh, give you the title, you, you choose the title this round, then uh, 
then uh, by the time you already have a group member, okay? Not really so much. So let's say you don't have a group member, you can you can propose in this uh, in this uh, SCP group. We use it to conduct the lecture. You can find the members here as well. Okay, not really so much. So uh, reuse oriented software engineering. So this is uh, the one that you just remember. It's just a uh, use it for integration and configuration. Right? Okay? Use the component, apply the component, configure it, and then integrate it into the into the system. So nowadays, I will tell you, none of the organizations are trying to develop this software from the scratch. This happened to the few years ago, but not now. Okay, not in the future. So um, it quite widely used in the organization in the in the in the international now. You just look for the component from the library requires inventory. Okay, so you try to look for those uh, components that are related to your customer requirement. Then you try to configure it and then plug into your system like your Lego. Plug and play, plug and play. By the end, you build up one structure. It's your systems. So this is quite fast, but uh, there's definitely there's a own challenge. When you plug and play, you need to have a very good knowledge in terms of the programming as well. And then you need to know the data structure and then how you're going to derive all the class and object and so on. And then you need to get familiar with all those uh, uh, coding. OK, and then the instructions before you integrate them, before you uh, design the design the component itself, OK, or enhance the component itself. Okay, So not worry so much. This one will cover in one lecture as well. Okay. So I give you type of the component we call as a reusable software, but it's a component that we refer to. It's a standalone application system. So it definitely like what you assume now. It's an entire system. You can use the entire system. Re reconfigure it and then use it as assistance. Okay. It's a uh, very open minded now in the market. Okay. And the collections, but make sure this kind of system is they don't have copyright issue. It's like open source, not copyright. Copyright here refer to the like you're using in Microsoft Words. It's copyright under the Microsoft. You cannot alter it, you cannot modify it. But open, open source one, you can modify like Google Chrome, like Mozilla. Opera, all this can be open source. You try to reconfigure it and then to be your systems. Okay, this is called as a standalone application systems. So collection of the object means inside the system, there's a lot of the combination of the object. Okay, you try to combine the all, those, all those objects like your data structure, you try to unrelate this to the programming, and then by the end, you try to build out one system. Okay, so this is can be considered as one of the components. And then web services, this is uh, usually is deal with the API, um, like Google Mac API, like um, eWallet API, PayPal API. Um, there's a lot of plenty in the market now. You use those API, configure it, and then put, put some programming inside. Definitely there's their own code as well, but you try to add it, and then by the end, you integrate into your systems. This, this can be kind of the uh component as well but all these component web services component you need to have online because it's going to deal with their own cloud so however the services they provided is from their cloud itself okay so you cannot run away now or then when you design the software you must have a cloud you must have a cloud okay so this is a common thing in the market nowadays okay like google cloud like uh amazon cloud there's a lot of plenty of cloud in the market now, and then, but definitely you deal with each of the cloud, you deal with each of the services. There's their own programming. There's their own languages. They will provide you the, the instructions. They will provide you the manual. They how going to configure and how going to call the object and how going to integrate them. OK, so uh, key process stuck here. Um, all these key process that emphasize from the beginning until the end, is already have inside this diagram. So um, we strike away, try to understand this diagram. Okay. So requirement specifications, you need to have a planning and analysis. Okay. This one is deal with the, deal with the uh, integration and configuration model. It's uh, we call as a reuse oriented software engineering. Okay. This model belongs to the reuse oriented software engineering. So 
First, you need to have a requirement specific, specific uh, specifications. So you need to do the planning analysis and then you, you need to plan what kind of the component that are closely related to your customer requirement. Okay. Then uh, you need to analyze also whether this component are able to adapt into your system, are able to comp compare, uh, compete, com a com compatible to your system design. Okay. So either you go to two way, one is to try to discover the software or you try to maintain the software. Discover software means you don't have any component in your hand. Software maintenance, software evolution here requires that there's already in your hand, there's an existing software, existing component. Okay. So, but no matter how you choose, whether you're going to discover the software, you're going to evaluate the software, you need to refine the requirement. Okay, so refine the requirement here, it means you try to change the component itself, it will be much more difficult compared to you change the customer requirement. Am I right? So that's why some of the components that you grab from the online doesn't mean 100% that fix into your customer requirement. So how are you going to do layers for your customer, whether they can slightly change their requirement and then try to use this component Accommodate or we call as adapt to the customer requirement, but changes of the requirement cannot be too large, but just slightly only, and they need to get approval from your customer. So that's why integration and application uh, in integration and configuration model always will really lead to the incremental deployment model. They are running at the same time. Okay, so once you refine the requirement, if, if you refine the customer requirement, then you need to choose your decisions. Either you're going to configure the applications, systems, let's say you have a system, entire systems, or if you have only the component itself, then you are you are trying to ask yourself, you would like to add this component into your systems, or you try to design a new component into your system. Sometimes you cannot find the component online at all. Then at this time, you need to deploy your component yourself. Sometimes you might aware that you deploy the component yourself, but it's a much more faster than you try to configure other person component. Okay, then you might opt for the path is uh, you try to deploy a new component, and then by the end this component should be integrated into your current systems. Current system means your current project, what you have designed, not the existing system. It's a current system. Okay, so far so good. Any questions? Uh, good to ask. Okay, thanks a lot, you guys, for the past feedback in the class. So there's a few questions here. Minimum, what I mean by minimum here? You mean uh, tutorial class must same. Um, tutorial class is based on your. Um, I'm not sure about your tutorial class here. Is a, uh, is a uh, asking me about the assignment. Assignment. I repeat again. Assignment. You can decide. Uh, you can choose your group member from different program, not only really so much. For example, like CS student can miss out with the CN, IA, IB students. It's not only really so much. But for tutorial class, uh, those one you cannot choose. It's based on your register slot. Okay, so you register on the tutorial. Uh, let's say like tutorial uh, stop one, then you need to attend on the particular time on the particular venue as well. Those one you cannot choose. Okay, those one you cannot choose. It's depending your early registration. But for the assignments, because we conduct in the class, okay, we conduct in the class, not in your assignment class, yeah, not in your tutorial class, eh? because you are tutor, so your tutor not get familiar with the assignment. So I'm going to use your lecture class to conduct the assignment. So you can choose from your group member from different programs. So not worry so much about this one. So um, can anyone invite me again? Okay, clash again. Okay. Okay, there's so many problems for the MS team today. Okay, um, I miss the minimum members of the assignment group. Um, usually I will advise you guys try to have four members in one group. Because in one assignment, we have five sessions. And let's say you're less member, then usually your workload will be getting heavy. 
Yeah, so my advisable is uh, try to get maximum four. If let's say you don't have amber up to the four, not worry so much. Uh, next week, when I release the assignment title, you just fill up your uh, your your map your and requires your your group members name. Then those are not enough one. Other students who don't have group member will join you accordingly. Not worry so much. Okay. In this assignments, the reason why I design like so is because I would like you guys to learn what it means by the HR diploma approach. This one we're going to discuss in the lecture two. And then you're going to apply the principle also for the incremental diploma model. Okay, so I should be able to let you in advance, let you know in advance is uh, for the agile diploma approach, it will break it down into two. One is an uh, incremental diploma model. So you might notice the incremental diploma model in our slide just now. It's a part of the agile approach. Have you aware about this one? Notice here, yeah? incremental deployment is part of the agile deployment. Means uh, agile deployment under the categories of the agile deployment, there's an incremental deployment approach and extreme programming approach. Okay, so in the extreme programming approach, there's one feature they call as a pair programming. Pair programming is not ask you to do programming. Pair programming is the concept and then the we call as a the uh, the principle that you need to apply to work as a pair in one group. So you have four members in one team. You're going to break it down into two persons in one group. So it means one team that two group. So any happens on this particular team, uh, they should be able to discuss themselves and you should be able to fasten out your software development. But how are we going to implement this? You need to understand the lecture two first. Then only you should be able to know how you're going to apply. So that's why assignments are designed in the group. Okay, and then uh, you need to have a discussion because uh, your assignments are designed on the medium scale project. This is not called as a too small project, not to called as a too large project, but it's a medium. But how are you going to call this as a medium? Medium usually you need a lot of the uh, manpower to work out on the particular assignments because the duration of the assignment is very short, okay? Only one trimester. So you need to have a collaboration with your team member. And then throughout this assignment also, you need to, you also should be able to learn how you're going to manage your project. How are you going to monitor your project? How are you going to deal with your group map? Okay, this is very important. All this will be covered in the each particular lecture. Okay, so, so no worry so much about this one. So the benefit of the uh, of the reuse oriented software engineering is try to reduce the cost and also try to minimize the risk because customer always along with you. Okay? So any happens on the project itself, customer always will give a comment because the customer don't like to look the project fail am I right? because they are the they are the person who invest the budget for you. So customer always is come from the organization, one of the organizations, they would like you to do or design the system for them. So this is your customer. So in the lecture, sometimes you might notice you're using another keyword they call as a stakeholder. So remember, stakeholder always refer to your customer. Okay, so faster delivery. So that's why we need to apply the principles of the um, agile diploma approach. Is uh, referring to your incremental deployment and extreme programming. Use those principle; it will fasten your delivery. Okay, so I believe you might curious uh, why you do incrementally, but you come out so many versions. Always get comment from the customer, but you still should be able to deliver the project fast. Uh, in the lecture two, you will understand. Okay, we we need to apply the principle. So once you finish your lecture two, you 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 will know exactly uh, why it's very useful in the market nowadays. And uh, definitely if they have a reuse oriented software engineering, you, you configure, you in, in, integrate, definitely there's a disadvantages as well. As well. You will not be able to make 100% of your customers requirement. This is one of the issue because your uh, changes are inevitable, means it's a changes is unpredictable. 
So what I mean by unpredictable here, sometimes your software design or develop on the hardware, it becomes of the government regulation, for example, like SST chain or GST chain to SST, suddenly they announce. Then your customer say, my current proposal systems will no longer be used, so I would like to upgrade this certain requirement to the certain uh, certain requirement that you need to enhance. So, so this is a changes without your without your predict amount, right? So sometimes because of the technology that they list, you are not doing well upfront analysis. So you're not doing well the technology study, then you just propose. Then could be next year the Bluetooth new mobile release. Then they're using the new Bluetooth. Ha. Huh. Then customer will ask you to change the requirement. So that's why requirement is unpredictable. It always controlled by the external, not by internal. Okay. So lots of control over evolution. You use a lot of the component. Those components are designed by your vendor. Some of the components you need to buy. Okay. Some of the components you need to buy. So and these services are usually controlled by your by the external is your vendor. So let's say vendor suddenly they notice their design component you are using halfway, then the design component that they propose or they design is not that demand on the market. Then they would like to uh, stop the selling. They would like to stop offering the service. Then there's no try also. Then all this in the end you need to settle everything by yourself. So, so, so the the control versioning of the software is not by your own; it's by the vendor. So, so this is a challenge of the component itself. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. Yeah. So, um, any question you would like to ask? I'd like to give you the attendant role. OK, thank you. OK, you can scan your attendant now. Uh, the QR attendants are provided on the meeting check. So uh, I think we stop at here today. Uh, there are too many technical terms that we cover now not be able for you guys to digest one round at, um, in the short while. So um, we stop at here. Then you try to go back and do the revisions. We try to cover the rest on the Friday. OK, on the Friday. So uh, see you around again on the Friday. Okay, thank you.